after the sleepy UFC Ultimate Ultimate 1995 tournament, in which both semifinals and finals were decided by judges, the UFC promoters decided on a new formula. In UFC 8, fans saw a timely return to basics, as they ditched lengthy technical bouts in favor of insane giants and skinny little men beating each other up in the octagon. UFC 8, David vs. Goliath, and the age-old question, does size matter? UFC 8 took place in February 1996 and was the organization's first tournament held outside the United States, namely in Puerto Rico. It included an eight-man tournament and a UFC Super Fight Championship bout between reigning UFC champion Ken Shamrock and Kimo Leopoldo. The tournament had an open weight category and a 10-minute time limit was set for all matches of the tournament and 15 minutes for the Superboy and the final. In the duels of the event, Larger fighters fought smaller fighters, hence the name, David vs. Goliath. There were huge difficulties in organizing this tournament. It almost broke, and the organizers had to win the right to hold it in court. UFC 8 is notable for being the first to draw criticism and protests on the spot. These protests sparked a nationwide anti-MMA movement in 1996, led by Senator John McCain, which forced the sport temporarily underground in 1997. But this happened later, and then, on February 16, 1996, 13,000 fans gathered at the Ruben Rodriguez Coliseum in Bayamon, Puerto Rico, to enjoy the fights of already beloved fighters. And they met new athletes with a standing ovation, who may become new stars of the UFC and mixed martial arts in general. And so it happened. The new star of the show was a firefighter from Tucson, Arizona, named Don Fry, nicknamed Predator. He was 6'1 and weighed 206 pounds, and it was his debut in mixed martial arts. Don started wrestling at school. In college, he was trained by the legendary Dan Sever, who went on to become UFC 5 and Ultimate Ultimate 1995 champion. At university, Fry was friends and trained with another future UFC champion, Randy Couture. During his student years, Don won several prestigious competitions in Greco-Roman wrestling and freestyle. After college, Fry became interested in boxing, and after a year and a half of hard training, decided to fight like a professional. He made a successful debut and won early victories in the first two fights, but then the boxing career did not work out. Don spent six fights during the year and did not win a single one. He hung up his gloves on a nail, but did not stop loving the fight. Fry continued to develop as a fighter, combining work with judo training. He received a second Dan Black Belt in Judo and believed that he would still show himself in the martial arts world. In 1995, Don helped prepare Dan Sever for the 1995 Ultimate Ultimate Tournament and was inspired to try MMA as well. Predator fought in the first fight of the tournament in the quarterfinals of UFC 8 with local Puerto Rican fighter Thomas Ramirez. It was also his debut in mixed martial arts and for him, he was heavier than Fry. Commentators announced that Ramirez had an undefeated record of 200 fights, but judging by his extra weight, this is hard to believe. Don and all of his cornermen had the same mustache. Dan Severn was one of them. It was a happy mustache because it brought him good luck. In this fight, Fry set the record for the fastest knockout in the UFC. After the start of the round, the fighters simultaneously threw jabs, and Predator went ahead. He threw a couple of straight punches, and a right jab knocked Ramirez down. He added one finishing blow, and the referee intervened and stopped the fight in the eighth second. Don advanced to the semifinals, and Thomas Ramirez no longer fought like a pro. And the record for the fastest knockout in the UFC was beaten eventually by Dwayne Ludwig as much as 10 years later, knocking out an opponent in six seconds. In the second bout of quarterfinals, Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioner Joe Moreira and MMA fighter with boxing base Paul Varlands clashed. The Brazilian Moreira was a title jitser with a black belt in BJJ and judo. In this fight, he was the representative of the Davids and the representative of the Goliaths. Varlands was 95 pounds heavier and 9 inches taller. The battle of styles has gone all the way. The huge polar bear occupied the center of the ring and began to apply pressure. Barrera made several unsuccessful takedown attempts, but when exiting the clinch, he landed well with hooks. Varlands powerfully applied with a right hook, where the Brazilian assessed the opponent's strength. 
The American meant another pass to the legs for Moreira with a series of hooks, but the Brazilian answered well with a jab. Moreira cycled a lot and occasionally threw front kicks. Varlins, for some reason, did not use his size and did not want to work from a distance. He used to catch up with the Brazilian and unleash his heavy hooks on him. Moreira missed but kept the blow. After 10 minutes of the fight, all three judges unanimously raised a sign with the inscription Varlands. Polar Bear reached the semifinals, and the Brazilian's hope of the tournament went out before it had time to light up. Jerry Bolander and Scott Ferrazzo were next in the octagon. Bolander was the spokesman for Ken Shamrock's Lion's Den and had a 1-0 record for Ferrazzo, nicknamed Pitbull. This was his MMA debut, and he was 130 pounds heavier than his opponent. A classic confrontation between a grappler and a puncher. Bolander landed a couple of solid low kicks before Ferrazzo made a good pass and landed heavy hooks from the clinch. Jerry Bolander resisted and smashed his opponent's face with short hooks. Pitbull lifted his much smaller opponent and performed two powerful suplexes, taking his back and landing several hard blows. Ferrazzo went to the guillotine choke and pinned a Brazilian near the cage. Bolander held on for a long time and got out of the grip. The Brazilian also tried to hold the guillotine, but to no avail, and Ferrazzo threw him to the ground. On the parterre, nothing happened except for a couple of dangerous headbutts in the face from the pit bull. Referee Big John McCarthy got the fighters up to check on the condition of Ferrazzo's cut. The fight resumed and the American pinned Bolander to the cage. The Brazilian again tried to use the guillotine and strangled Ferrazzo with his jersey. Pitbull had a takedown, but Bolander showed his wrestling skills and went to the guillotine. At the beginning of the 10th minute, Ferrazzo tapped in surrender. A very impressive victory for Bolander in a very good fight. In the last fight of the quarterfinals, American Paul Herrera and Canadian Gary Goodridge clashed. Herrera was a student of Tank Abbott and at the same time claimed to be a master takedown artist but preferred to fight in the stance. Big Daddy Goodridge is a Canadian boxing champion and a world arm wrestling champion. He represented the Cooksville Wan School where he trained for less than a month. Big Daddy was 73 pounds heavier and 5 inches taller. It was the debut in mixed martial arts for both fighters. After the gong, Herrera rushed to the attack and tried to make a pass at the legs. Goodridge defended himself from the pass and skillfully went to the crucifix. Having blocked both hands, the Canadian unleashed a hail of terrible blows with his elbows to the temple. Herrera almost immediately passes out and already the last five blows were superfluous. The elbow was so fast that referee Big John didn't have time to stop the bout. It took only 16 seconds for Big Daddy to destroy the opponent and go to the semifinals. And this crucifixion of Goodrich will forever remain in the best MMA knockouts. Paul Varlands and Don Fry were supposed to fight in the first fight of the semifinals, but Varlands suffered a leg injury and was eliminated from the tournament. He was replaced by Sam Adkins, who knocked out his opponent in 50 seconds in the alternate bout of the tournament. He had a boxing base and was 60 pounds heavier than Fry. The fight began with a careful reconnaissance with jabs, but already at the 20th second, Fry made a pass in one leg and carried out a takedown. Don gets behind his opponent and unleashes several strong blows on him, like Adkins tapped, but McCarthy did not stop the fight. Predator continued to destroy his victim from the side control, and the referee ended the speeding at 48 seconds. Sam Adkins' face bleeds as Don Fry advances to the final. In the second bout of the semifinal, Shoot fighter Jerry Bolander and Canadian boxer Gary Big Daddy Goodrich met. The Canadian had perhaps the best beach promo video. In it, wearing a tight black tank top, gold chain, beret, and sunglasses, he declared that Big Daddy brings home the bacon. Although Goodrich was larger than his opponent, Jerry Bolander did not want to become bacon. Another intriguing confrontation between a small patient grappler and a big aggressive puncher. The fight began with Bolander's attempt at a takedown, but he was caught by the guillotine. He was able to break free and threw himself on the ground to avoid being thrown. Goodrich took lateral control, but was able to inflict damage on his opponent. Inexplicably, Bolander made a sweep and got into a full mount. He showed good ground and pound, but Goodrich managed to lift his opponent and make a rotation. Now he is in Bolander's half guard trying to break the defense. Big Daddy eventually stood up, and Bolander remained on his back, looking for heel hook. Goodrich landed two brutal right jabs, and McCarthy stopped the fight. 
the Canadian made it to the final, where the Predator was already waiting for him. Before the final, the organizers staged a super fight for the UFC title between current UFC champion Ken Shamrock and Kimo Leopoldo. The legendary Ken Shamrock, nicknamed the most dangerous man in the world, was already an experienced MMA fighter and owned an impressive 22-4-2 record. In the last 16 fights, he had lost only once. Shamrock was the first Pancrase openweight champion and won the first UFC Super Fight Championship from Dan Sebert. Shamrock's rival, Kimo Leopoldo, was on a series of four victories in a row and wanted to become the champion. The David vs. Goliath theme continued, with Kimo being 65 pounds heavier than Shamrock. Immediately after the gong, Kimo charged with a middle kick. Shamrock grabbed his leg and performed a takedown. From the side control, he could not do anything. But then he got into a full mount. Instead of turning on the ground and pound, he tried to get a choke from behind, but ended up on the bottom. Kimo dominated the ground and landed several headers and powerful left. But Shamrock shifts position, grabs his leg, and does a heel hook. In the fifth minute, Kimo surrenders, and the most dangerous man in the world defends the UFC Super Fight Championship and continues his nickname once again. The final of the tournament, David vs. Goliath, is left with two strong, aggressive fighters who prefer to fight in a standing position. Interestingly, this is the heaviest of the Davids against the lightest of the Goliaths. Gary Goodridge changed his kimono to short shorts, and everyone saw his frightening dimensions. He was almost 50 pounds heavier than Don Fry. Fry's advantage was that he fought for only 56 seconds in this tournament. The fighters exchanged blows from a distance, and the Predator attacked with a series of direct blows. The fighters entered the clinch. Goodridge grabbed Fry's body and ate several cubits before throwing Fry to the ground. Predator immediately jumped to his feet and almost got acquainted with the powerful soccer kick of Big Daddy. The fighters are back in the clinch, and Fry landed some powerful uppercuts and hooks. It felt like Goodridge almost gave up. Again, a standing fight, and even the cage of the octagon, which Don grabbed, did not save him from the takedown. The Canadian threw Fry to the ground and took his back. The Predator threw Goodrich off his back and ended up on top. He unleashed a flurry of punches on Big Daddy, whose corner threw in the towel. Don Fry becomes the winner of the UFC 8 tournament, a cool debut of a talented fighter in mixed martial arts. David defeats Goliath and again the fighter emerges victorious. Although to call Fry a wrestler would be a contradiction of his amazing ability to fight in the standing position, which turned out to be decisive, Don Fry is the first all-around fighter to achieve success at the UFC. He can be safely called the prototype of a mixed martial arts fighter. All in all, UFC 8 was an amazing and spectacular event in the MMA world. After a disappointing Ultimate Ultimate 95 and a series of terrible super fights, UFC 8 has made great strides. The David vs. Goliath format was a lot of fun to watch. It was very successful in creating a series of exciting and dramatic fights. If you enjoyed this video, please put a like, leave your comments, and press the bell icon to avoid missing the next video. And if you watch this video without a subscription, sign up for the channel right now. We'll see you in the next video.